welcome back to my channel. So today I want to talk to you about acing the AP English Literature exam essays. So I've already done a video about doing the open question, which is the one that you can prepare most thoroughly for, but that's only one of the three essays that appear on the AP English Literature and Composition exam. It's kind of a mouthful. And it's not to be confused with AP English language. That is kind of a different beast. So make sure you're in the right place. I will link below uh, so you can see the open question and the multiple choice if you haven't seen those videos already and you want to ace that exam, get a five out of five college credit and be on your way. So today, the other two kinds of essays that the exam covers besides the open question are the prose and the poetry essays, as you might expect. One gives you a poem or sometimes two short poems, and the other gives you a prose passage and then asks you a question about the overall meaning of that excerpt or of that poem and then asks you to break down different elements of it. So talk about character development. Sometimes they'll ask you to do that in prose. Um, describe the, the tone of the narrator in the poem toward the subject. The prompt varies, but essentially they'll ask you about the overall meaning of the work and then some element that, uh, that builds up to that, that contributes to it. So a couple of basic things about the AP essays. I've said this before, I think, but I'll say it again just in case you guys missed it. So they are graded on a one to nine scale. Nine is the very, very highest that you can get. I don't know why it's not 10, but I don't know. I didn't create the test. So it's on a one through nine, a nine, an eight or a nine is considered perceptive and persuasive. Those are the buzzwords that you want. Um, six and seven is actually reasonable and competent, but the eights and the nines are perceptive and persuasive. They're all graded holistically, so not only picking apart the grammar, but looking at it as a whole, how good is the essay? How good are the thoughts, the organization, the evidence, all of that? You'll have about 40 minutes per essay, so 40 minutes for prose, 40 minutes for poetry, 40 minutes for the open question. So keep an eye on the time. Here are some tips for acing the poetry and the prose in that very short window of time that you have. The only thing that you can really do to prepare beforehand is to hone your close reading skills. I hope you've been doing this throughout your AP journey. Um, at, the at the time that I'm making this video, it's already April, so there are only a few weeks left before that exam hits. But if this is next year that you're watching the video, for instance, take heed. You need to be honing your skills the entire year about how to closely read, how to pick up on tone through word choice, how to um, break down the elements of characterization, um, thought, speech, physical description, um, what the different elements of poetry are. So be working on that actively so that when you come to the exam, you're able to read something and get quite a bit out of it the first time if you read it carefully. Um, I know that that covers a lot and you're probably thinking, well, gee, thanks. What do you really have to offer? Just you wait. I do have some very specific things that are going to help you regardless of your level of close reading, but do be working on that. That's really an important skill that you need to uh, do, be the best you can be at this essay. So to the, to the exam essay itself, you want to make a good first impression. Always picture the poor people who are grading these essays throughout the year and think, what would they want to read? Well, they want to read something legible. So if you struggle with handwriting, like I at least did and sometimes still do, um, slow it down just a little bit. Something a little bit shorter that's legible is better than something that's a little longer and is illegible. So make sure it can be read very easily and clearly. Second basic thing that you should do, show some organization. Show that you actually have organization in mind by breaking up your essay into multiple paragraphs. It seems like something small, 
But every once in a while, even my own AP students will just get caught up in an idea and they'll forget to break their thoughts into chunks. They'll just kind of go with all of their, their ideas. Make sure that you break it up into some rudimentary organization. It doesn't need to be the five paragraph essay model, but you do need to show where one major thought ends and the next one begins. The third thing you can do to make a good initial impression, just as the person's looking at your essay, is to start off with a bang. Start off by saying something that is meaningful and interesting about the work that you're writing about. There's no particular thing that you need to say, but don't start off by restating the prompt. Don't start off with a bland sentence. Start off with something that is interesting that'll hook the reader even as you're figuring out what exactly your argument's going to be. It's okay if the, the interesting nugget that you bring in in the first sentence doesn't end up being the most important point of your paper. It shows that you are thoughtful and an engaging writer. Thoughtful about the, the works that you've just read, that is. And those are two things that you want the graders to think of you. So as the paper goes on, I want to remind you, you will not have time to make an outline. I know that a lot of AP students are very thorough, and just by the nature of watching this video, I can tell that you want to succeed. And so people like that will very often be focused on perfection, on having everything, all of their ducks in a row before they begin. The kind of people who outline. There's nothing wrong with being the kind of person who outlines, more power to you but know that there will not be time to outline. You have 40 minutes to digest a piece of work and to come up with something perceptive and persuasive to say about it. So in place of an outline, consider your thesis statement, your um, overall argument as your kind of plan that you need to stick to. Don't feel that you have to put a thesis statement right at the beginning of the essay like you would for a traditional essay. This is AP, it's a different beast. People know that you need to be off to the races. That horse is running, and you, but you'd better be on it. If you don't end up solidifying your idea at the beginning, that's okay. Do put a thesis statement at the end, then. Somewhere in your paper, there needs to be a clear expression of what your whole paper is about. The second general tip that I have for you is to answer the whole prompt. You must answer every piece of it. Don't leave out a section of the prompt because you found something interesting to talk about regarding this other section. It all should weave together. All of your evidence, all of your, your detail that you bring in should answer every part of the prompt, including, and this is the one, the piece that is most often forgotten in my teaching experience, including the overall meaning. Always answer that part of the prompt. What does this matter to the audience? What's the overall meaning of the work? What should we get out of it? So answer every part of the prompt. Avoid summary. I'm pretty sure I said the same thing in the open question video, but again, this is something that is so, so important and it takes discipline to do. You need to avoid just summarizing the work. Instead, you need to focus on those very, very specific details. What is the wording? What is the, what is the precise order? How is that character feeling by, by the words that they say to the other character? You have to be as specific as possible. You know that the grader has read this piece. There's no need to recap generally what happened. They know it. You need to convince them of your point of view. So avoid summary. If you stick to summary for either the poetry or the prose essay, you will not get higher than a five. A five on an essay is not the end of the world. You can still do very well if you do a good job on the other essays, but you want to definitely get something higher than a five if you can. And what characterizes a five is that it relies too heavily on summary. So break the habit of talking about summary. Only bring up as much as is absolutely necessary to make your point. But with the poetry and prose essays, when the pieces are very short, 
chances are you really won't need much of that at all. Just stick to those details, those specific, specific details. Even going so far as, as well, certainly quoting multiple passages and words from the, from the work, but going back and re-quoting the passages that you quoted before. So let me explain what I mean. Let's say that you are quoting an, a couple of sentences from the prose passage. Normally you want to keep those quotations short, but let's say two sentences. Seems perfectly reasonable. Now, when you are explaining the significance of those two sentences, going back and once again pointing out specific words, putting those again in quotation marks, because the writer so-and-so uses the word X and Y, the melancholy tone shifts from, you know, whatever you want to say, but going back and, and pointing out specific pieces of your evidence what, just to solidify your point is going to show some pretty acute analysis that you're not just using the quotations to tell the story or make a general point, you are analyzing it. And that is what these people are looking for. Just as a bonus, something that you can do, all these other things that I've said you need to, you need to stick to if you're going to do very well, but as an added bonus, something I would recommend is that you use snazzy vocab. Sometimes people will have an essay that looks boring just by the way that they repeat vocabulary or they don't have a new way of explaining the idea that they're talking about. Is there any other way that you could express the same idea? Or even just throwing in an interesting simile or an unexpected word. Consider some snazzy vocab. I know that not everybody is the kind of writer naturally who goes to all these uh, brilliant, sparkly words, but stretch yourself. Here and there, throw in an unexpected word, be that a synonym or part of a metaphor. That'll show that you are, once again, thoughtful, interesting, and that you have something to say. It just is a lot more fun to read something that doesn't sound repetitive, but sounds fresh and new. So that's what I have for you today. I hope this was helpful. I know that there are other skills that go into writing a good prose or poetry essay, but these tips, starting off with a bang, answering the whole prompt, writing legibly, avoiding summary, all of those things will help you. If you do this, you will get higher than a five. In fact, you will get higher than a six, but you're guaranteed to get higher than a five if you follow even just the, the basic instructions that I'm giving you uh, today. So best of luck out there. If you have any additional tips that you know have helped you succeed on these essays, uh, please leave them in the comments. I would appreciate hearing those things so that I can maybe pass them on to my own students or that everyone in this community can, can learn from you as well. All right, so that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. There's all kinds of good stuff on here. I hope to see you soon.